Hey, welcome back. We're the Kampai guys. This is part two of our Thailand series. Uh, David, what have we got today? So today we're going to try out three cup noodles. First, we're going to go with Tom Yum Ramen. Move into Gapao Ramen. Thai street food ramen. Wow. Uh, move on to everyone's favorite Thai curry dish. Green curry. I love green ramen. curry. And finish up with a Masaman curry on rice. Nice. So David, what's up with these? Are these real? They're not real, they're plastic they're for decoration. We won't be eating them today. <laughs> I think this is going to be a spicy episode. <laughs> cool. Pretty you ate the green stalk. <laughs> All right, so Tom Yum is served. It smells really good. I can get some lemongrass. I can too, actually. It's got a nice uh, crisp scent to it. <laughs> yeah. Do you eat a lot of Tom Yum? Not so much, though. No. Um, as far as Thai food goes, I love green curry, yellow curry. That's my jam. <laughs> I think uh, Tom Yum is a little bit different in Thailand than in countries like the UK or the US. In in England it's like a kind of starting or side dish, but when you get it in Thailand it's like a bowl like this big <laughs> <laughs> with all the creatures of the ocean. Dude, that's, that sounds so much better. Actually. It's like a main dish. Mm -hmm. It's kind of strange for a soup to be a main dish for Western people. Usually that's a starting dish or a side dish. Of course, in Thailand there is not Tom Yum ramen, I don't think. So. <laughs> is this like a bastardized version? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Wow, the lemongrass is very strong. This is nothing like ramen. One of the big points of Thai food is that we should always have all five of the main flavors. This one is really on the, the sour citrus side. That's my experience with Tom Yum, like adding a lot of lime juice to it. Limey, Just... that's a good word. Okay, it's very limey. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> slightly, slightly different, but... <laughs> Damn, I like this a lot. Spiciness is there, but it's not like crazy. It's spicier than I imagined, actually. What I do when I eat this at home, I usually do like, I think what they do in Thailand is the same thing. They have lime wedges and fresh coriander on the side mm -hmm. and fish sauce. And as you're eating it, you keep re-seasoning it. My only complaint with this dish is the quality of the noodles. The soup tastes like a different level to the noodles. So for that, I'll give it a hit in our high <laughs> score. But I would love to try this broth with a... Uh, better quality noodles or even no noodles yeah just by itself this came with two sachets so one was a powder soup packet and the other was an actual uh paste dude that is delicious just the broth by itself it actually has a, quite a good balance it's not too spicy it's mm. kind of making my nose run a little bit it's definitely a little bit spicy <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't be tom yum if it wasn't spicy would it I'm actually kind of bummed. I still want more. <laughs> <laughs> it might be one of the tastiest dishes we've tried on the show. All right, now for something uh, quite different. We have green curry ramen. Green curry ramen. Yeah. Have you ever had green curry ramen before? No, I haven't, but I love green curry, so. I've had the green curry ramen before. In Japan or? In Thailand? Japan. In Tokyo, there's a shop called Osanova. Something like that. Bossa Nova. Bossa Nova. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you go there, like half the sign, well, this was a few years ago, but like half the sign was broken. So it was like Bossa Nova. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's about 20 minutes from Shinjuku, like a local line. 
local mm. subway line. At that store, they employed like someone from Thailand to work mm. in the kitchen. He was making his own curry paste. Apparently, like the chef decided, oh, that might work as a ramen. Mm -hmm. They started like making a ramen soup from his curry paste. Damn! I hope that guy got a raise or a promotion <laughs> or something. I hope he's got like a chain of restaurants. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and on top, they put yakitori. You put like grilled chicken pieces. Whoa, that sounds amazing. Yeah. It's got like the yakitori charcoal taste on green curry Dang, that's awesome. noodles. It's definitely worth the trip out there if it's still open. I heard they actually have a, another store in like New York or something overseas. Also, you know, it's legit because they're too busy making ramen to fix the sign. Ooh, it smells very good. I smell that coconut milk. Again, a little sheen of like green oil. Itadakimasu. Okay, and not bad. Initial impressions, it's it's quite light, quite good spice level. Yeah, this. I do you know where like green curry gets the color from? Uh, no, I don't. It comes from green chilies. In the spice paste, they use a lot of green chilies. Really? Wow. Yeah, so they use so many, it actually makes the soup green. I'd probably argue that green curry works better on rice. I'd say the flavor is good, but the soupiness and the noodle quality bring it on. It tastes a bit like if you took green curry and then added like chicken soup to it and then mixed it around. You know, it does taste better without noodles. The two, I prefer the tom yum one. Me too. Yeah. Me too. If you guys have tried any unique or interesting ramen before, please let us know in the comments. You know, I've tried green curry ramen. We've had cucumber karashibi ramen. <laughs> <laughs> I think that takes the cake. <laughs> Recently I saw in Ehime, where we live, there's a cheese fondue ramen. I've had, um, I think you have too, like an Italian-inspired ramen. Not really an Asian flavor at all, it tastes more Italian than anything. Next. Oh, next we might go a little spicier. Final stage. It seems we've encountered the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of red in there. So of course this uh, didn't come like this. I. Uh... We boosted it. Have you heard of this dish, Gapao? It's becoming po quite popular in Japan. Basically it has a lot of chili and basil, Thai basil leaves. Hmm. Basil, we say it in English. You guys say basil. Right? Basil. Basil sounds like a... Basil. Uh, like, like a name. Yeah. My grandfather's name was Basil. Really? Yeah. What? Crazy. Basically all old people in England are named after herbs or flowers, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like, uh, I don't even know if this is true or not, but like a Sherlock Holmes character. Basil. Basil Faulty, John Cleese. Faulty Towers. Oh yeah, I've heard of it before. Faulty Towers, it. yeah. Mm -hmm. His name is Basil Faulty. I'm gonna give you a damn good trashing! <laughs> anyway, so this dish <laughs> <laughs> is basically a very affordable Thai street food dish. It's usually only, only one or two dollars. Minced chicken, I think. Sautéed with uh, soy sauce. And it usually has like a fried egg, like a runny fried egg on top. So it's a dry noodle. I had to put water in and then let the water out. Added the paste and the sauces. Added a few chopped things on top. And uh, <laughs> ready to go. I think I got, I got Davided. Itadakimasu. Right off the bat, I think the noodle quality is better. In general, I just prefer dry noodles. I, I got some them. of that pepper in there. To me, it kind of tastes like the chicken mince part of Gapao but without any of the toppings. Certainly does have the heat. It is very fragrant. You know, it's actually not that bad, the peppers. I mean, there's, there's a ton in here, but it's manageable. I have quite a few peppers left, but um, I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> I don't. These chilies definitely get you like right here. I haven't even peaked yet. No, you have not. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> my final thoughts, sorry, bear with me, my final thoughts, <laughs> I think without those peppers included, it would be a very bland dish. With the peppers included, it's uh, a very intense dish. <laughs> yeah. How about half the amount of peppers yeah. and, <laughs> yes, not finished, and some like fresh milk. Thai basil. They could benefit from some basil too. Just like mixed in as it's hot so they like wilt a little bit. I would argue a quarter of the peppers. 
Sometimes I feel like I'm your whipping boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is as hot as it's going to get today. Until we get to the uh, chili latte I made you. Chili milkshake. <laughs> chili milkshake? <laughs> Jesus. Have you had Massaman curry before? It's a pretty mild coconut milk, creamy curry. I think it has some like half Indian, half Thai roots. So it kind of uses kind of more like an Indian spice taste. They're using like star anise, mm. that kind of flavor. Uh, but they use coconut milk. Usually it's served with beef, uh, potatoes, and peanuts. Mm, perfect. Hopefully that'll take the edge off. <laughs> <laughs> cool down with some coconut milk. Yeah. Dessert is served. <laughs> dessert, very unique dessert. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have masamon curry on rice. This one says it's made with a lot of coconut milk. It has peanuts and potatoes, like I mentioned, as someone very often has. Interestingly, on the back it says you can serve with rice or stir fry with noodles. I think in this case, rice was the best choice. With all these potato chunks, it kind of has a like a soul food kind of feel yeah. to it. Itadakimasu. What kind of rice is this? This is Thai Jasmine rice. Tastes like it's been cooked quite a long time. The potatoes are very soft. It tastes like your typical uh, coconut milk base. Thai curry, but with uh, like potatoes, like a stew element. So does it have kind of like a Middle Eastern or Indian kind of background flavor? That's I think what the history of the dish is. I would say though, it still primarily tastes like a like a Thai dish. I'm a simple man. Usually, when I go to restaurants, I'll always choose like my tried and true like okay, three right. different dishes. Mm. Go two dishes. Yeah. yeah, if I find something I like, I'll stick with it. I'll try something and I'll I'll love it, and I'll end up coming back to the same place for that dish. And I would even go as far as to say that Musselman curry is like the Thai version of Japanese curry. Even old grannies can eat it <laughs> and make it. Yeah. <laughs> Today we tried out some of the I guess most popular hot foods in Thailand. Not as crazy as durian on the first video. I have heard in Thailand they have a fermented durian, as if durian wasn't fermented enough. David, what was your favorite dish? It's between the first one and the last one. Tom yum, ramen, and this curry. I expected this to be good. So I'm gonna go with the Tom yum ramen. That's my favorite. Oh, okay. I like the soup. My second favorite from today was the Tom yum ramen. The soup base was fantastic. I just thought the noodles were you know, kind of lacking. My favorite by far was the Musselman curry. By far. <laughs> yeah, I think I didn't give it to this just because I have this a lot. But in terms of overall food quality, obviously this is the best time. Okay, well, we hope uh, if you haven't had a lot of Thai food, this uh, two episode series has stimulated your interest. Maybe try some durian. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Lizard fish. Lizard fish. It was alright. And definitely give Massimum a try. For sure. Next that's, visit to a Thai restaurant. That's my recommendation for probably the entirety of this uh, Asia series is the Massimum curry. So far. So far. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to drop us a like. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so you can see all the updates we put out. Until next time. Until next time. See ya. <laughs> what was the name of the first one? First one was Tom Yum Ramen. Tom Yum. Tom Yum. Tom Yum. Tom Yum. Tom Yum. <laughs> <laughs>